Well, the holiday weekend has come and gone. Now comes the time for COVID-19 testing and monitoring how you feel in the coming days. As we know, big gatherings can result in COVID cases. Of course, we're tracking monkeypox as well. Right now, the Omicron subvariants, though, are driving up COVID cases here in California. Joining me now is Dr. Peter Chin Hong from UCSF. Doctor, how concerned are you about this past weekend's gatherings and the potential for a summer surge? Well, Noel, I think if you'd asked me a few weeks ago, I would have been more optimistic about having a good July and August, but I think no one expected BA4 and BA5 to kind of keep us at really high levels. So what it is like uh, is like a tank that you have, and in the oldies, that pipe will be going out and the water levels will completely go down. But right now we have a tank with a water pipe going out and a water pipe coming in. So it's staying at a relatively uh, steady level. So what these uh, events from the past uh, weekends and for the July, et cetera, will do is contribute and continue to contribute to this pipe of cases coming in. Well, I'm gonna get uh, a bit personal here. I've just come off of my third bout of COVID-19. I had it back in July of 2020. I had Omicron in January, unfortunately contracted it again just a couple of weeks ago. I have three vaccination shots. I figured those kind of coupled with my previous infections would deem myself very unlikely that I would have gotten it a third time. So now that I have, my question is, what do we know about reinfection, especially when it comes to these current subvariants? Is everyone at risk, no matter what your previous experience and vaccination status? Well, first of all, Noel, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you got it three times. That must be such a bummer, um, but I'm glad you 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 recovered. Um, I think in terms of you getting it two weeks ago, there's a chance that you would have gotten either BA4, BA5. We're starting at that point for new cases to be approaching 50%. Of course, now they're more than 60 to 70% with both BA4 and BA5 combined. Mm. So if you did get that, uh, I think you will probably be um, sort of like in the clear for the next month or two or even longer, depending on if there's okay. no more new variants around. Uh, so I'm crossing my fingers that you did get BA4, BA5. I assume so. You know, the symptoms were very, were different from much less severe, obviously, and very different from my infection back in January. I know so many people got it back in January. That was our last um, big surge. One thing I did notice, though, you know, I, I, it was mostly just sinus uh, issues. I, I thought maybe mm -hmm. I just had a sinus infection, um, and I tested myself via my nose several times. And it wasn't until I swabbed my throat that it came up yeah. positive. So is that what people should be doing? Yes, unfortunately, it's not going to be official guidance, but I've heard so many cases. Like just yesterday, I heard about somebody who had five days of symptoms. And on day five, they finally mm -hmm. tested positive in the nose. Uh, but we do know that combining the throat and the nose together, apart from the ache factor, right. would uh, provide a, a, a sooner result. Of course, the other alternative is to get a PCR earlier. But coming back to your earlier question about reinfection, that is the superpower of BA4 and BA5. If you've had Omicron in January or even March, uh, you're still gonna be susceptible to getting BA4 and BA5. Do we know why that is, or it's just gotten smarter, the, the virus I think it, we, we are getting a better sense actually, and it's because um, the, you know, they're called the escape artists of COVID, the, mm -hmm the Houdini, uh, and that's because the spike protein looks so different even to BA1, mm -hmm. that the front guards, which are the antibodies, aren't recognizing it, but the inside bulldog, which are the memory T cells and B cells, mm -hmm. are keeping us away from the hospital, and that's what happened to you because um, that's what the vaccines do. Even though they're not necessarily great right now until we get an updated one in the fall yeah. at preventing the enemy at the front gate, when the enemy gets inside, it's going to kick it out and you're not going to go to the hospital. Right. I mean, that's, you know, the, the thing that I'm thankful for, obviously, having um, having not a severe bout of it. But again, you know, it's just a little uh, frustrating, obviously, and, and confusing uh, when you take all the precautions you can. I do want to switch gears just very quickly, ask about monkeypox. We know cases have more than doubled over the past week or so here in California. Uh, what's the situation looking like now when it comes to monkeypox? And does the general threat to the public remain low? The general threat to the public 
continues to remain low for now. Uh, it still primarily amounts men who have sex with men. And we expect to see a lot more cases in the upcoming weeks. That is because the incubation period of monkeypox is relatively long, two weeks, sometimes three weeks. Uh, and what that does is that people who don't know that they're infected are continuing to spread it because you feel completely fine. Um, the good news is, of course, it's not like the early days of COVID. We have a vaccine, we have drugs uh, for the most serious cases. We've had to treat a few serious cases in San Francisco so far, but the vast majority of people are doing fine. It just takes a while to get over those lesions. And of course, some of those, the rash can look a little bit scary, but it doesn't uh, make people very, very ill in general. I think the main push from the Department of Public Health is to try to get uh, people vaccinated as much as possible in the gay community. And I think uh, that that is the focus right now. Okay. Dr. Peter Chen Hong with UCSF, thank you. Thanks so much, Noel.